So my name is Mark Zajac. I'm part of the Organic Farming Program. And we're, here's another workshop series. What is this, like number four? Workshop number four? Four, yeah. And uh, this one I found out is, uh, this one is about seed bombs. And I, I just recently found out what seed bombs are. And uh, I've been using it for multiple purposes now. And um, it really, what a seed bomb is, it's a very simple concept. And it's been around for a while, is you take red oxide, which is red clay, which is, you, if you, you know, you can make pots with that. You can make bricks with that. It's, you can really compact it really, really well. Oh, <laughs> all right, great, great. You can actually come up over here, because we have some, some bins. Um, and what we're going to do is that uh, we're going to make some of these things. Wow. All right. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to pass these around. Well, I'm going to tell you, um, this is, uh, does anybody know what a seed bomb is? Does anybody ever heard of a seed bomb? I just found out, have you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just found out how to do this not too long ago. And um, the idea is that you take clay and you take compost and you mix it together like a cake and then you throw seeds in there and a little bit of water. And what you do is you kind of make a meatball. So it looks, you know, just like a meatball. Actually, it looks like it's something you can eat. So the thing is you let it dry and what you do is you find a place where you think a flower or a plant ought to be and you throw it. And what happens, yeah, so what happens is that when it rains really hard, the clay breaks down, the compost is there for nutrition for the plant, and, and hopefully nature will take its course and the seeds will germinate. So does anybody want to see what this looks like when it does? All right. All right. I'm going to pass this over here. This right here is about a couple of weeks old. Now, I kept this indoors, so I kind of babied it a little bit. We're having a really dry spring, so things are, you know, it's hard to get things watered consistently. I consistently watered this. But just to show you that, I was kind of a little concerned about whether these things work. Now, in theory, like, it'd be nice, you know, in principle, but I want these things to work really well. So if you just pass that down. And uh, here's another one here. So if you want to pass that one over there. And this one I just started. This one's only like a week, a week old. So the thing, um, being uh, somewhat into science, I was wondering, OK, what would be, I, I did like a little like seed bomb test kitchen thing. Did you ever you know that show on PBS? Yeah. Where you find out like how do you do something the most optimal way? Well, I'm thinking like I looked online. If you look online, you might find a recipe on, on seed bombs. And I'll tell you, and I found a lot of them saying five parts clay, three parts compost, one part seed, right? And I'm thinking that's a, that's a heck of a lot of clay. Because if you, if you know what clay can do, does anybody know what bricks are? If that's, red, that's red clay, dried. And this, I'm just going to pass this around. This goes from pure clay. This is pure clay. This is pure compost, which makes it brittle. And this is everything in between. So this would be like 3 quarters, half and half, 1 quarter, and then compost. So if you want to pass that around. And if you know what like concentrated clay is, you think you got to think like like can a seed actually get out of that? Can water actually get in there? So I think full amount of clay that's not going to cut it. Or if you have a full amount of compost, well seeds like compost, but the thing is it's so brittle and fragile it comes apart. So you want some clay to keep the structure of the seed bomb. And you want some of the compost for the nutrients, and it adds porosity. You know, anybody know what porosity is? It's sort of like compaction. If you have compaction, you have little spaces, right? So water can't get in there and break it down. If you have a lot of holes, right, like in the ground soil, it's really a lot of, it's fluffy and, and airy. You want things to travel in there, so the water will break down the seed bomb. That's what you want. You want the water to break down the seed bomb, so you have some gaps that seeds are allowed to escape. So if you see the examples, you can see like how it, uh, it, once it gets watered, it breaks down, it cracks, and then seeds are able to come up. So here is the, um, here's the little uh, scientific experiment I did. <laughs> and I was kind of surprised by it because I thought that my hypothesis was that the more clay you add, the less germination you're going to get. The more compost you have, it means when the seed germinates, it, it's... Actually, the professor can actually <laughs> give you. What's the, what's the definition of germination? Oh, the seed is an embryo, right? And it just needs to start coming 
Perfecto. Thank you. Thank you. So this is my little uh, test kitchen thing. I did different ratios of clay. So, so three to one means there's three parts clay, one part uh, compost. This one is five parts clay, three parts compost. This one's half. And then I went the other direction. I added more compost than clay. And if you want to, end, if anybody wants to see the results, I will start with. I want to start with these guys over here. And I'll bring this over. So what we're going to do, that's why when I gave the directions, I kind of left, you guys can fill this in. See the parts here? <laughs> mix something parts of clay, mix a certain amount of compost. I want that to be up to interpretation because I don't think the 5 to 3 ratio is that optimal. I think maybe adding more compost than clay is probably more beneficial. That's just my personal, just having that kind of experience. Where do you get the clay? Okay. I was just going to ask you, is there a reason for the clay to protect the seed from birds? Yeah, that's another, there's, a, there's multiple reasons for that. The structure, if we just threw seeds out, there would be some germination going on, but you know that's going to be vulnerable to squirrels and birds and all that stuff. So you kind of house the seeds in a sense that you protect it from, from birds. Yeah, so, and of course you also have that throwing power. <laughs> so clay does definitely, it's not, um, it's not that really de detrimental. There's a purpose to the clay. But I think having a sort of a balance of clay and compost is, is probably the best way to go. So I think, I think, I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm going to let everybody uh, look at the results that I got. That's over there, actually. Um, and then you can come up with your, uh, you can come up with your own interpretation. Because I was a little surprised. I thought that the clay ones, the more clay ones, would not germinate. I thought it'd be just too compact. But what I found was it, on the edges, the seeds germinated on the edges where there was some gap. And what I found with the most on the compost was that they were able to break through in the middle. So I think that adding more compost is good. But also keeping the clay is not is necessarily a bad thing either. So I'm thinking like half and half. I think, I think a ratio of half clay and half compost is probably a, a good mix. Um, so it's, it's almost like kind of like making a cake. So is everybody ready to get kind of a little dirty? Or do you, want me to, do you want me to do one first and show you? Or, yeah? OK, let me, let me see this tray. I'm going to use yours. OK. So and I'm going to, is, is somebody, uh, can somebody pick up that clay? It's kind of heavy. And I'm going to use, um, and let me see. I'm going to use your measuring cup. This one? Yeah. yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix everything dry first. Oh, yeah. Let's. Uh, could you take a risk of growing the seed bomb and it breaking as soon as it hits the ground? And That's what you wanted to do. Oh. Yeah, you kind of you wanted to do I that. To yeah. Quality yeah, because you want it kind of the, the breakdown. It's because you want, I mean, the more, the more cracks, there's more pores, the more water will get in there and kind of smooth it all out and break it down. And then the seeds have a better chance of escaping. So. Um, what I'm going to do, this is going to be your bin, so I'm going to start it. I'm going to take, it gets kind of powdery, so you don't want to like fluff it up oh, as much. Oh, that was clay, like art clay. Well, this is art clay. I got this, uh, thank you, Susan, I you. <laughs> you had a question. Where did I get this clay? I, I had a hard time finding this clay. And because you go to Michael's, you go to like uh, in any other arts and crafts store, they sell it already with oil and water for you to mold. You got to go to Rhode Island School of Design. And they have a whole room full of all kinds of clays. They have, uh, this is the cheapest clay. This is 48 cents a pound. And so I ended up getting 20 pounds of this stuff. You know? But it's uh, 20, so it's 48 cents a pound. And, uh, and I get it at RISD. And I can't, if anybody knows another like, legitimate art store, you know, uh, let me know because that's the, that's the nearest one I can find. It might be like a ceramicist if you know like, where they get their clay. They might have a, a, like, a, you know independent source. Google. <laughs> yeah, to Google. So I'm going to take um, half comp, uh, clay, and then I'm going to take um, this is my this is compost from a worm bin. Is it a worm bin? Does anybody does anybody have a worm bin at home? Nobody has a worm bin at home. We have a compost. You have a compost. Well, I got a bin at home, right? It has red wiggler worms, and whenever I cut up an onion or I, I cut a potato, I take all those scraps and I put it in the worm bin. 
And what happens is that the worms kind of like it and they eat it. So what happens, I, I throw away my trash in, in the worms eat it and I get free compost. And this is the result, I get free so what compost. There are actually worms in there <laughs> because I couldn't, I mean, I tried to, to save as much worms as possible, but they're so, like, sometimes they're really small baby worms that they end up, like, just, uh, every now and then I find one in here. Yeah, you can keep one. So I'm going to take half of this stuff and I'm going to put it in here. Now, here's the trick. I got a pound of wildflower mix. You see this piece of paper? These are all the flowers in this mix here. Everything. There's a, a wild concoction of stuff. So I'm going to take, I'm probably going to take like, this is one to one ratio. I'm going to do a half of that. So whatever cup I have, say it's one cup, one cup, one cup, the seeds would be a half a cup. So what I'm going to do oh, is I'm going to take these seeds, put them like that, okay? and. I'm just going to put it in there. Excuse me. And then I'm going to use my official seed bomb mixing tool. And then <laughs> and just mix it in like that. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Or a spoon actually works. But it's not really official. It doesn't just. So this is what I get, really. It's kind of like mixing a cake. When you mix a cake, you mix really the dry ingredients first, I think. And then I'm going to take some water. A small amount, right? Just a small amount. Because you don't want to put too much water. It just gets too soggy. Just a really small amount. And then you get your uh, seed bomb mixing tool. <laughs> And then you kind of mix it around. Now this is the point where you're going to get dirty. Yes. See how it's coming? Now sometimes you're going to have a feel like it's too dry, so you can add a little bit more, more water, and then it's going to get a little too wet, so you can add a little bit more compost clay. But then, like from experience, you're going to find what's right. So let me. This is a little bit too dry. Just a little water goes a long way. Okay. So, does anybody make meatballs at home? <laughs> you do? Can we show you? How do you make one? Has anybody ever made a meatball before? Yeah. Yeah? You want to try? Yeah. All right, good shot. <laughs> All right, so it's, it's really that simple. It's just you take this mixture, it's a little wet, you don't want too much water, and you roll it like a meatball. The thing, the trick about this is that you don't want it to get too compact. You don't want to make like a perfect round thing because now you're just pushing all that air space out. It's, it becomes more compact. You want some porosity. You want some, some gaps. So it's, it's fragile. You let it dry, it'll, it'll keep, right? It'll, it'll dry and it'll, it'll stay intact. So now, once it's dry, then you find a place, and you could be your garden, you don't have to throw it. I personally like to throw things, so I'll throw it, and then wait and let nature do its, take its course. Or, if you want, you just crumble it with your hands wherever you want flowers to be. You what? Uh, you scream seed bomb. Right. You, seed that's bomb. true. That's true. But sometimes you want to be incognito, right? You don't want to. Right? You want to be incognito. You want to be a little secretive about it. So, yeah. So let's get started. Who wants to now? Now, now you know how to do it. You want to do one? Yeah. All right. So, I'm going to. How are we going to do this? I'm going to work with this table and I'll work down. Okay. Okay.
much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.